magandang umaga po sa ating lahat at muli kami ay nagagalak na makasama ang bawat isa sa ating morning devotion. As we continue to read in the book of Isaiah, now we are in chapter 8. But also today is also our fourth day of the celebration ng ating Passover. And we want to encourage everyone to, to have a time to commemorate this time and to really come in the presence of God and to ponder dun po sa ginawa po niya sa atin, beginning by the time when he allowed the death and the destruction of Israel to pass over them. And it's the same thing that God has given us in our time today. He also passed over and allowed all the calamities in our lives to pass over us. And he gave us Jesus as a Passover lamb. Amen. And we, we want everyone to enter into this, into this truth, especially sa panahon at sa timing ngayon ng pag, ating pong pag-alala ng Passover. Amen. And we know that God is our mighty deliverer. And Jesus has done it. Amen. As a Passover lamb, ay namatay po siya sa krus ng Kalbaryo. And just last Sunday, we celebrate that Sunday resurrection. Okay, the resurrection Sunday. And we had a, a play na naganap po dito sa church. At lalo po nating naintindihan kung ano po ang kahulugan ng kamatayan ng Painong Yesus sa ating mga panahon ngayon. And I believe it's the same thing that God wants the people of Judah to understand in chapter 8. Amen? Noon pa lamang po maging, sa, maging bago pa po na matay ang Painong Yesus, God has always been the heart to deliver us. He is always there para po tayo ay pagtanggol, tayo po ay tanggalin dun po sa position na kung saan po tayo ay, ay masisira. And this is the very work ng Painon. From the beginning until today and in the future, God is quick to deliver. God is always there to deliver us. Amen. And this is something that we need to celebrate. This is something that we really need to believe in faith. Amen. And that is our topic sa araw na ito. In Isaiah chapter 8, as we read this chapter, we need to trust in the God who delivers. Our God is not just a God of creation. He's not just a God who is just a friend or a father. But He is a mighty deliverer. And nandun po yung affection ng Painoon sa atin to always take us out from that very position where we can be destroyed, na tayo po ay mapapahamak. Amen? And so that's why He has a lot of ways to deliver and save His people. And in chapter 8, this is a continuation and is so much connected sa chapter 7. Amen? Bakit? Ganito na lamang po ang sitwasyon ng mga taga-Juda noon. Because in chapter 7, we, we learned last Friday that he is, Judah is facing this great struggle. He, it is faced with great war against two nations, Israel, their own brother, and even the king of Aram. Amen? So dalawang nasyon, ang kaaway ay, at nagsama upang sirain at supilin ang nation ng Israel. But you see in chapter 7 pa lamang, sabi po ng writer ng Isaiah, even if two nations rise up against Judah, sabi po dito, but they could not overpower it. They cannot overpower the land of Judah or Jerusalem. At ganun na lamang po ang preservation ng Panginoon sa nation na ito, na kung saan even if two big nations come against it, they cannot overpower Judah. Amen? Subalit, kahit ganito po ang pangyayari, kahit po very overt at obvious, ang success, ang victory ng Judah, nandun pa rin po that deep within them, they are full of fear. Kaya po sa chapter 7, sila po in-encourage ng Panginoon to the prophet Isaiah. And he says in chapter 7 verse 4, Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Sabi po niya, bakit be careful? Amen? Because it is when we begin to fear that we fret, we dread. 
na dito po nawawala yung ating pananampalataya. When people are in trouble, madali po tayong matakot. At ang ating pagkatakot, ito po ang naglalayo po sa atin sa presensya ng Painon. Ito po madalas ang dahilan kung bakit tayo napapahamak. Amen? Because we begin to do things on our own. We begin to, to lose our trust in the Lord. But today in Isaiah chapter 8, God is reiterating, God is making and giving an emphasis sa kanya mga anak, trust in the God who delivers. Because He shall deliver. Amen? And, and kahit po ganun kalaki or kal- karami yung kanilang kaaway, they need to trust that God is delivering them. And even in chapter 7, it ended in the way that he reminded his people. You don't need to fight so much. There will be a time that God will make a way for you. Ano pong sabi dito? He gave Assyria as one of the signs. And they will be an instrument ng painon para po iligtas ang kanyang mga anak sa Judah at sa Jerusalem. So balit in chapter 8, ganun na lamang po natin maintindihan Ang, pagka, ang takot ng mga taga Judah that in chapter 8, the, the, the prophet Isaiah continued in reminding them of the words ng Panginoon. Now, first point that I want to share in verse 1 to 8 is that believe God is quick to deliver. Believe God is quick to deliver. The Lord said to me in verse 1, sabi po dito, Take a large scroll and write on it with an ordinary pen, Maher Shalal Hajbaz. Ito po yung pinapasulat po sa kanya. And he says, take up this big scroll and, and use an ordinary pen. That means in a way that these people will understand. God is stooping down in the level of these people dahil they were being blinded by their fears. That's why God has to make and command Isaiah to make this big sign, okay? To make this big announcement for the people to, to know Maher Shalal Hajbaz. What does it mean? It means speed to the spoil or hurry to the plunder. Amen. Spit to the spoil and hurry to the plunder. God has already given them the sign and assurance that He will deliver these enemies into their hands. And they will spoil, they will get the spoils and they will plunder these nations. And they will be quick. Amen. Sabi po niya dito, so He made love and they bore a son. And they called it Maher Shalal Hajbaz because it is a sign God is giving to the people of Israel that in this way, you will also see the quick deliverance of God before this child will learn to say mother and father. The deliverance of God will be experienced by my people. And he is quick to deliver. And this is something that God wants them to understand. Back it. Because the people of Judah, they were very impatient. They believed in God. They fight their battles. But they still fear. They still doubt God's presence, God's mighty moving in their lives. Why? Because they were impatient. Amen? Siguro, feeling po nila eh, hindi po, pat, hindi po fully napagtatagumpayan pagtatagumpayin ng Panginoon ang kanilang mga gawain. Because they were very impatient. They are rushed. Amen? Pero sinasabi po ni Isaiah, you need to know God is quick. Not that God is so hard or unable to deliver them completely. But it's just that the people are so impatient. Amen? Gusto nila po agad. Kaya nga po, nawawalan po sila ng pag-asa kahit po pinapakita ng Painon sa kanila. They have been victorious in a lot of things. Amen? Lal na po sa kanilang kaaway. But then, these people, they do not understand. It is because of their unbelief. Amen? It is because of their unbelief. At bakit po Sabi po dito in verse 6, The Lord spoke to me again because this people has rejected 
the gently flowing waters of Shiloh and rejoices over Rezin. I'm the son of Remaliah, therefore the Lord is about to bring against them the mighty flood waters of Euphrates. Bakit po ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon? Akala ko ba i-deliver niya ang mga taga-Juda? Subalit, sabi po niya dito, dahil ang mga tao ay nereject nila ang Panginoon. They have been rejecting God by allowing fear to reign in their hearts. By doubting God, they have rejected God and they rejected the waters of Shiloh. Ano po ba tong Shiloh? Ito po yung small river, small spring na binigay ng Panginoon sa Israel because Israel do not have these big rivers. Okay? Unlike the, the, the nation of Assyria, they have these Tigris and Euphrates and these are mighty rivers. They really cause so much flood. And these people, because they fear, They'd rather, you know, yung, yung honor nila nandun po sa kanilang mga kalaban, sa Assyria, sa Aram, sa Israel. And they have rejected the God that is saying to them, I'm going to deliver you. It's like rejecting the Shiloh, this, this gentle spring that God gave them. And you know, God has been gentle to these people. God has been sustaining these people. They may have been facing a lot of difficulties in their lives, but they have experienced how the Lord covered and protected them and sustained them. They may not be that super great nation compared to a lot of these big nations, but you see, the presence of God was with them. Amen? But they have rejected this. They have de rejected the sustenance of the Lord in them, but instead they look up at Rezin. Ang resin po ni na to, they, sila po yung kalaban. And they, they fear them, They're, they fear their enemies rather than fearing God. And you say in our lives, many times ganito din po tayo. We, when we are in trouble, we are quick to respond in fear, but not to ask God. We are full of unbelief. We are full of unbelief that God has to speak in our level and He has to give us a sign. Nakita po ninyo, many times in the Bible, why God is, a, is to give a sign. Because many people tend to ask for assurance. To cease to believe. We always want assurance in our lives. Para po tayo manampalataya. Bakit po si Moses? God showed him the sign. Because many times in his life, he also doubted God. Why God give a sign to, to Gideon? Because Gideon do not believe that God is going to use him mighty and God is going to deliver them from the Philistines. And many times, the sign is needed, is necessary because man is full of unbelief. Diba? Ganun din po tayo. Even when we, when we uh, are looking for a husband, pag tayo po ay nag, naghanap ng work, we are always looking for a sign. And we know, I hear a lot of people, they were asking for a sign. And you know why does sometimes we need a sign? Because man is full of distrust and unbelief of God. But you see, God is willing. Because He is a God who speaks. He is a God who wants to deliver His people. Amen. And we need to believe this. We need to believe that God is going to, live, to deliver us. And He will not just deliver us, but He will not allow us to suffer that long. But He's going to be quick if we only believe. Many times we think God is not quick to move. Hindi po dahil... God is unable, God ay nahirapan po siya to accomplish His will, accomplish the deliver, delivering work. But you know, it is because we are just so rushed within us. Hindi po natin kayang magantay. Dahil po tayo nais po natin instant lahat, di ba? Lalo na po dito sa Metro Manila. Everyone is so busy with our work. Everyone is so busy with a lot of things. And we always eat instant noodles. We always go to fast foods. 
when we line up, we are, we are impatient to wait. And many times we see that in our lives, even po yung promotion, even po on things, yung, yung development ng mga bagay-bagay sa ating mga buhay, even in our relationship, we tend to rush everything. At minsan po, minamanipulate po natin ang timing ng Panginoon. We manipulate God by putting our own timeline. Pero madalas po makikita po natin, God is destroying our timeline. God is destroying our plan. Because minsan po yung timeline natin, yung plano natin, eh, hindi po ito nakakatulong upang tayo ay patuloy naman ang palataya sa Panginoon. If instant, God will give everything sa atin. We will not learn the principle of waiting. We will not learn the principle of trusting, of perseverance, of patience. Amen? But you see, we need to understand when I say believe God is quick to deliver, He is going to do it according to His timeline. Amen? We should believe. We should not be impatient but instead, trust in the presence of God among us. Verse 8, sabi po niya dito, Its outspread wings will cover the breath of your land, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Many times po, even in chapter 7, he says he's going to bring the virgin will bear a son, and he called Emmanuel, and this is a sign. And even in our time today, Amen? Sabi po dito, raise the war cry, you nations, and be shattered. Listen, all you distant lands. Prepare for battle and be shattered. Prepare for battle and be shattered. Devise your strategy, but it will be thwarted. Propose your plan, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Second point, trust in the presence of God among us. Trust that God is with us. And His presence is more than enough to give us an assurance. His presence is the very sign. Jesus' presence among us, the birth of Jesus is a sign. And He was called Emmanuel because God is with us indeed. And it's the same message that the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the people. God is with us. Amen? God is with us. My children is a sign. The son of the Virgin Mary is a sign. We may see a lot of signs around us. Alam kung tayo lang po ang hanap ng sign. There's so much signs around us. There is a sign of suffering, a sign and a symbol of, of difficulties around us. Marami pong kapigatian, marami pong discouragement. When we just look for a sign around us, you see, you will not be encouraged. We will not believe in God. Dahil po, ano pong pinapakita ng mundo sa atin? Heartbreaks. Disappointments. And so that's why in our lives, ang hirap po nating manampalataya sa Painon. But what is the sign that God is giving us? It is the sign that allows us to be reminded, God is with us. Jesus, this Passover celebration, the Resurrection Sunday is a reminder for us. God is with us just as He is with them in Judah during those times. Do not call conspiracy. Sabi po dito, even if nations rise against us, against them, but know that the presence of God among them is more than enough to deliver them. They should not fear, sabi po dito. Do not call conspiracy, verse 12. Everything is people cause a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. And He will be a holy place for both Israel and Judah. And He will be a stone for them. What stone? A stone that will become a stumbling block for them. Bakit? Because yung way po nila, dere-derecho po sila, dun po sa way ng destruction. 
Doon po sa way na kung saan sila po ay mapapahamak. They've been into fear so much. And so they have to, God is to become their stumbling block. Para lamang po matauhan po ang mga Israel. Para po matauhan ang mga taga Judah. That their deliverance, it is not, it doesn't come to be being friends with these people. Tinan nyo po ang Israel. Kaya po niyang ibifriend ang Aram, ang nasyon po na hindi po isang Israel, to go against his own brother Judah. This is the way of men. We, we will not see. We will not see the perfect will of God. Ang gusto lang po natin kung paano mapangyari yung gusto natin. And sometimes we are blinded. Why would he connive and befriend this nation of Aram against Judah? Na kung saan po ang kapatid po niya ay Judah. And many times this, this is who we are before God. May mga ways po tayo na akala po natin this will lead us to success and prosperity but is actually leading us to destruction. And so that's why God will thwart the plans of men. Even if nation rise against us, no matter how powerful and mighty their armory, their plans were, gaano man po sila kalaki, even po yung mga plano po natin, gaano man po ka-clear, gaano man po katindi yung calculations po natin, If this is not the perfect will of God, God can thwart the plans of men. Lalo na kung alam po niya na ito ay kakapahamak po natin. That's why we should not trust. We should not boast in chariots. We will not boast in horses. That means we will not boast and trust in the ways of the world. But we need to learn to trust in the Lord. Trust in the presence of God. We may not see God's presence among us. In our naked eyes, you don't see God walking on us or walking with us along our journey, but in the spiritual eyes of faith. We need to understand God is with us and He is our holy place. He is a place of refuge. He is a place of calmness and peace. Amen? Ito po yung promise ng Panginoon. Tingnan nyo po ang Russia. Russia is so big of a nation against Ukraine. But I can see the hand of God. They retreated from Kiev. Some of their forces retreated. And this is just a small nation of Ukraine. You see, God can thwart plans. Even if nations rage, even if men You know, boast in a lot of things in our lives. We can never, we can never thwart the plan of God, but God can in our lives. That's why we need to trust in Him. We may see the strength and the power of nations or the power of the enemy over our lives, power of the evil force in the world today. But as a church, we need to trust in the way of God, and do not follow the ways of the people. That is what Isaiah says. And what is the way of this world? What is the way of this of the people? It is unbelief and fear. It, it says there in verse 12. But the Lord says for us through Isaiah that he is with us. His presence is enough. Amen? His presence is enough as a sign for us, as a testimony for us, that He is going to deliver us. He will not fail because He is a God of deliverance. Amen? But fear only God because He can cause us and enable us to fall. Alam niyo po ang kailangan nating katakutan, hindi po yung gano'ng kalaki ang problema natin. Hindi pa kung gaano kalaki o karami po yung mga atake ng kaaway sa atin. This is not something that we need to fear. But we need to fear if the presence of God is not among us. We need to be fearful kung ang presensya ng Panginoon ay wala na sa atin dahil po sa kawalan natin ng pananampalataya. Dahil lamang po sa ating patuloy na pagiging matatakutin sa maraming bagay. 
There's a lot of things that we will encounter. Alam niyo po, hinarap po natin ang pandemic. Hinara, hinaharap po natin ang maraming mga war at this moment. There's a lot of wars going on. There's a lot of things going on in your marketplace, in your relationship. Pero hindi po ito ang ating katakutan. Ang katakutan po natin, pag wala na po yung kapayapaan ng Panginoon. Kung wala na po yung encouragement, yung comfort ng Panginoon sa atin. Because it's something the enemy cannot remove from us. But it's only when we turn away from the Lord and we run away from the very presence of God. Na patuloy po natin na ibinibigay at isinusuko ang ating buhay sa palad ng kaaway. And this is how we are being destroyed. But we need to stand firm and believe that the presence of God is more than enough to cover us, to provide for us. Remember in the wilderness po, ang mga Israel, wala po silang kahit ano. But you see, for 40 years, God sustained these millions of people of food, water, protection, na hindi po sila nasira. Even the very sandals in their feet, even their very clothes, hindi po nasira for 40 years. That is imag- unimaginable. But it is possible in God. And it's the same thing sa ating buhay ngayon. Ano man po marahil ang mga imposible na ating pong kinakarap. Imposible marahil na ating mapagtagumpayan. Imposible ang ating kaharapin. Subalit, kailangan po nating maintindihan. Ang presensya ng Panginoon ay nasa atin. And His power of resurrection is upon us. His deliverance is upon us. But we need to, sabi po dito verse 16, bind up this testimony of warning and seal up God's instruction among my disciples so that we will wait for the Lord who is hiding His face from the descendants of Jacob and I will put my trust in Him. We need to bind up this testimony, this signs we need to understand. God gives us a sign for us to understand. Amen? God gives us a sign. And that brings us to the third point in verse 19 to the end. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spirits who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Third point, God will instruct and will be the light. No matter how dark our present and our future are. But know that as long as God is with us, He will be leading us. His words will be a light for us. It will be a guide po sa bawat isa sa atin. Our God is alive and He speaks. And last Sunday, we celebrated that. He resurrected from the dead. But many of us until today do not understand the power of resurrection of the Lord. Until today, we have vain hopes. Until today, we resort to vain works. Nor put no, we put our trust to dead hopes. We, we consult mediums. Naniniwala pa rin po tayo sa horoscope. Naniniwala pa rin po tayo sa feng shui. Naniniwala pa rin po tayo sa mga superstitions in our time. But no one dared to come and ask God through the words, through His words in, written in the Bible. Many times we inquire of men. Many times we inquire what the Facebook says. What is acceptable in the world today? Ano yung trend? Ano po yung, yung sikat ngayon? We are always like this. But know that whatever this world can offer, it is momentarily. Someday, it will all fail. But the Word of God will not fail. But we need to have this heart to be instructed. Consult God's instruction. Consult His words in the Bible. Consult your spiritual leaders. Ask counsels to your pastors. Pero nakakalungkot isipin po ngayon, many will consult si Pastor Google. Many will easily consult 
You know, si Cell Leader YouTube or si Cell Leader o Pastor TikTok. Even the church today, they find instructions on all these things. How they can move and, and, and follow the ways of the world. But you know, it is not what God wants us to do. The Lord says the people will stream up to the church. It is not the church that will follow the world. But you see, many of us until today do not get God. Do not get what God is saying to us. We resort to many vain works and we put our trust to dead hopes. And when everything fails, sabi po dito, we curse God. Verse 21. Man is stubborn enough. Sometimes you do not inquire of God. Just like the people of Judah. They allow their fear to lead and rule over them. Kaya naman po, kahit ano na lang ginagawa nila, and they turn away from God. They do everything except from coming to God and asking instructions from God. And the same thing in our lives today. Man is stubborn. And this is what ensnares us to destruction. We do not ask counsel from God. And when we do, we do not listen and insist on our desires. At marami po ako na-encounter na ganito. They would come to us, inquire, ask, magpaalam, mingi po ng instruction, even in their relationships, even their, how they deal with their finance. But you know, no one, not everyone pala listens and i see them suffer because they insist on what they want but you see if there's anything anyone that we can come and inquire of inquire of god inquire of our spiritual leaders that's why the church is here the church is here your cell leaders are there The many actions that we do, you know, marami po akong naririnig na lang. They do something. They even invest on, on things that are vain. But they never inquire. And I see many fail. And they do not just fail in one thing. They fail in many things. Because many times in our lives, we are stubborn. We do not ask instruction from the, God, from the Lord. But know that God is a God who is alive. And he wants us not to be destroyed. And so he's willing to speak and instruct us. And to guide us. And he will be the light. It is only when we learn to come before God. And ask his instruction. That in our dark times, the light will come and light. The light will come to light the darkness and will God will lead us the way towards life. And brothers and sisters, this is what we need to know. Trust that God is going to deliver us. But we need to learn to obey, trust in him, and follow his ways. Even if sometimes in times of following, hindi man madali. Minsan may ginagawa ang painoon, you know. Now you don't have to do anything. This is His way. Pero sometimes men, hindi po natin kayang gawin ito. Hindi po tayo napapakali hanggat wala po tayong ginagawa. But we need to understand God has His way. God has His timing. Amen. And today, as we continue with our Passover, let us come and reflect on ourselves. As we continue to repent, God has finished. God has promised us the victory already. But when will we understand? When will we accept this truth? That it's only in His presence that we can be delivered. It's only in His presence that we can accomplish a lot of things in our lives. Especially the very purpose that He has put in us. Today, let us come in the presence of God.
Oh, Father, we come before you. As we read your word today, And as we continue, Father, to reflect on ourselves in this time of Passover. Father, you said in your word that you will be our holy place. Your presence is enough. Your presence is enough of assurance, Father, for us to stand firm in faith, to stand strong even in times of our difficulties. But God, today, as we look upon ourselves, as we read in chapter 8, Father, we see ourselves, we have fallen short in many things. God, we are people, though we serve you, though we say we believe in you, in our words and in, in, in our actions and in our thoughts. God, we are men who are full of unbelief. Without your words, O oh Father. We profess it sometimes, but we do not fully stand our ground to fully believe and, and, and experience the living word, Father. And that God in our lives, many times we are stubborn. We insist on what we want. We insist on our ways. And we do not trust your ways, Father. Whenever we are faced with troubles, we are filled with fear. And we allow this fear to lead us. We allow this fear to take over our lives, Father. And we lose our sense in the Spirit. And we feel full of calculations. We are always asking for assurance. We're always asking for a sign. Because we don't believe you enough. We don't trust on your ways, Father. We even come on mediums. We believe on a lot of things the world is offering us. We believe in feng shui. We believe in our horoscope. We believe on a lot of things the world and even man speaks to us. We even believed our very voices, the voice of fear in our lives. Father, today I pray, forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Father. We repent of our weakness. We repent in the times, God, that we are impatient. There are times we feel and we accuse you of being so Lord, that you are, we feel like you are unable. We feel like you are slow, God, to accomplish your words in us. We accuse you of a lot of things. And so that's why we become self dependent. And we even, God, are impatient to see your deliverance in our lives because we manipulate you because we want you to move and accomplish things according to our own timing but we forgot that God we are short sighted but you oh Lord you are seated in the throne and you see everything even our past our present and the future and you know better than us for your ways are higher than our ways but we keep on father we insist on what we want and taking your place your position in our lives and we become our own gods we become our own gods father we become our idols and we trust on our abilities we trust on our own timing Panginoon patawarin mo po kami because we are filled with deceit in our lives. And we are deceiving ourselves by, under, by, by believing, Father, that we can without you. That we know better than you. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Panginoon. Today, God may be speaking to us. God is touching our hearts. There are things in our lives that we put our trust 
upon than God. Today we can pray for ourselves. Pray for ourselves. What are the things that we trust? We trust ourselves more than God. We trust our family more than God. We depend on our work more than God. We depend on our savings more than God. Today we confess, oh God, may you search our hearts. May you search our hearts, oh Father, and forgive us. Forgive us, oh Lord, of our stubbornness because we insist on what we want. Lord, we do not dare to come and inquire of you. We don't dare to inquire even for, on our spiritual leaders, but we rather inquire of the things, Panginoon, na ibinibigay ng tao. Father, today, may you search our hearts. Panginoon, patawarin mo po kami. Because we become self-sufficient. Na minsan po ang pagiging self-dependent, self-sufficient po namin. It leads us far from you. It leads us astray from your very will and your very purpose. Panginoon, sa araw na ito, patawarin mo po kami. Give us a teachable heart. Give us a heart that will search you. Give us a heart that is willing to humble before you, Father. A heart that can listen. A heart, Panginoon, that will embrace and pursue you, Panginoon. And not our will, but your will. Lord, hayaan mo, Panginoon, na mamatay po kami sa sarili po naming mga will, sa sarili po na, sa aming pagiging makasarili. But help us to arise with you, Jesus. To believe in your resurrection power. To believe in the life that you have given us and the time that you arise from the dead. And that God, we can in our time today, your resurrection power, your deliverance is in us and is alive and it is real. And it is for us to experience in our lives. Painoon, bigyan niyo po kami ng pananampalataya. Bigyan mo po kami, Panginoon, ng hope that we can learn to trust in you, to lay down all the things in our lives, but to grab hold of your promises. Help us, Father, to believe in your words, to pursue your instructions, Father, especially in this time, Lord, that men tend to be right on their own. Habang pong, Panginoon, lumalala ang mundo, Men begin to rise up like they think they know better than you. Even in the internet, Panginoon, nakikita namin. We, men want to try to be right in their own rights. We always use the excuse of the freedom of speech to do what we want, to say what we say. But we are falling away from your very purpose, Panginoon. Lord, today as one church, help us. Help us. Straighten our path to you, God. That may everyone who will follow you, not the ways of the world, they will find refuge in you. They will find deliverance in you, Father. For you will be their holy place. You will be their deliverer. You will be their comfort. You will be their peace. And the same thing that, you, Lord, we ask today, give us the peace. Give us the heart that will rely on you. Give us, Father, the will to grab hold of your promises. That anyone who will believe, they will learn to wait. They will learn to wait for you, God. They will learn to put their trust in you. And that, God, you be pleased in our lives today, even for us as a church. Painon, marami man po kaming kinakaharap ngayon. Ang pandemia, financial difficulty, difficulties in our relationship. But, Father, today we trust that we have a God who is quick to deliver. And I pray that to everyone who believes today, Lord, 
may you reveal yourself unto them. May they experience you greatly sa kanilang buhay. Preserve them. Sustain them. Be, Lord, the spring of Shiloa for them that moves in the midst of your people with gentleness but with life, with hope and sustenance. Father, we thank you. Refresh your people, especially to those who are suffering today, to those who are in fear. Lord, I rebuke the fear in their lives. I rebuke all the works of the enemy over their lives. And God, we cut off every bondage. We cut off everything that the enemy has, Lord, tied them on. I pray for freedom and release them. Release them today that they will be set free. They will continue to believe. Father, we thank you. And we entrust to you our lives. We entrust to you our nation, the Philippines, Painoon, that even as we have this voting, Lord, beginning this week and last week, Painoon, patuloy po that we will seek your instruction. We will continue to be, Lord, walk in your perfect will. And even in our decision makings. Father, we, we thank you. And that as we continue, God, to walk in this week of Passover, samaan mo po kami. Patuloy mo, Panginoon, ipakita sa amin what are the things we need to confess. That we may be, Lord, be acceptable before you, God. Lord, we thank you. I bless everyone today. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless po and see you again tomorrow for chapter 9.